in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to make an award-winning children's picture book just like this one. Welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline and this is a children's book that I wrote and I illustrated and I am super excited because it has just won a Feathered Quill Book Award. So I wanted to make this video to help you with writing your book if you are just starting and you have no clue where to start or how to go about writing a children's story or maybe if you have started writing one but you are stuck or you're struggling with your story hopefully i can pass on some of the things that i did when writing my story to hopefully help you as i always like to say this isn't the only way to do this this is just one way and this is just my experience and i just hope to be able to pass on any information that i've learned along the way to hopefully help some of you guys out there so this video is going to be specifically about writing the children's story i have already done a couple of videos about the process and my experience writing and illustrating this children's picture book. So I will link those videos down in the description below if you want to go check those ones out. But basically, I had never thought about writing a children's story. Writing stories was something I've always wanted to do, but for adults, not for children. And I had never thought about doing it because I didn't have the money, I guess, to spend thousands of dollars on an illustrator to illustrate my book. But my lovely friend, Nuria, over at the Home Boss YouTube channel has been making children's picture books for quite a while and she created a course to teach other people how to do it as well. Her course shows you how to create and illustrate a children's book yourself without having to hire illustrators to do it for you and without you needing any experience with illustration at all. So it's a really great course for you if you are a beginner. It is very beginner friendly. You do not need to know how to illustrate anything or use any kind of professional illustration programs. And if you are experienced in writing, you have written children's stories before, but you didn't know how to take that next step in terms of getting it illustrated, the course will be great for you too. Like I say, I've done some videos before where I do talk about Nuria's course. Those are all gonna be linked in the description below. And so I took Nuria's course myself because I was very interested in creating a children's book myself. And after taking that course, the duck that lost its quack was born. And I'm super happy with it. I'm For being my first children's book, that I've ever written and illustrated. I'm so happy with it. I'm happy with the story. I'm happy with how the illustrations turned out. Everything to do with this story, I love. And while it's not perfect by any means, there are definitely some things that I can improve upon from what I have done with this book. It was such a fantastic learning experience and I just plan to make more children's books this year. If you are interested in finding out more about the course, it is called the Children's Book Creator Course run by Nuria. I'll pop links. I always have links to it in my description box down below. It is a really great course and it is very affordable. So let's go over some tips to help you make a really great children's book and hopefully an award-winning best-selling book. Pick your audience and write for it. Tip one is to choose the age of the child you want to write for and then research as many books as you can for that age or that age range to see what types of words and language that they use, the way that the stories are written, how they're formatted, the types of words and wording combinations that they use. Children's books can actually range from basically age zero right up to being a teenager. So you can imagine that the type of book that you're going to be writing for a toddler is going to be vastly different from the type of book that you'd be making for an eight, nine or 10 year old child. In Nuria's course, she teaches how to create children's picture books that are generally going to be aimed at kids probably under the age of six. But that's not a rule, it is just in general and there is no reason why you can't take what Nuria teaches in her course and apply it to books that are going to be created or that you would like to create, perhaps for children that are a little bit older. But even under the age of six, a book that you would be writing for a one or two year old is going to be so different from the type of book that you'd be writing for a four, five or six year old child. Knowing what age that you are going to be writing for is very important because it needs to be easy enough for that child, that age to understand, but hard enough so that they are actually challenged by the story and they can learn something new from the story. But if you make it too easy, or too hard, 
they will lose interest fast. Let me give you an example. This is a book called Where is the Green Sheep? I would say that this book is aimed at sort of one, two, maybe three-year-old children. Now, if we take a look inside, there are very short sentences that make up the story of this book. They're not long, complicated paragraphs. One sentence per page. Very easy to understand, or it, for an adult, it would seem very easy to understand. But for one to two year old, maybe a three year old, this is quite challenging learning what these words mean and what the theme of the story is. Compared to this book here, I Need My Monster, I would say that this is aimed at sort of four, five, six year olds. And if we take a look inside this one, we'll be able to see the pa there are paragraphs multiple sen sentences per paragraphs. There is a lot more pages. I think this book would be about a 50 page book, but you can see that there's a lot more of a detailed story. I mean, look how long that paragraph is there. You can see the difference in a, the type of book that you'd be creating for a child that's only a few years older than who would be reading this book. If you don't have children or you're not around a lot of children, you really do need to take the time to learn the type of language, word and phrases, etc., that children of that particular age use and that they can understand so that they can relate to the story. The next tip is deciding on the style of the story. Now, by style, I mean whether you are going to be writing a story that is rhyming or non-rhyming and the running theme throughout the book. You should read a lot of children's stories if you haven't already, just so you can get an idea of how they're written, because you'll find that some children's book stories rhyme and some don't, and that is purely up to the author and how they want to write the story. I decided to create a rhyming story with my book, and that was purely based on the fact that I read stories to my little girl, and when I read stories, I find that I enjoy the rhyming ones the most, much more than the ones that don't rhyme, and that was pretty much the only reason why I chose a story that rhymes, because I enjoy reading them. But let me tell you, writing a rhyming story is hard. Trying to get words in your sentences that rhyme is really difficult without adding in just random words because they rhyme. It is really difficult. But personally, I find that books that rhyme are just a lot more relatable and much more enjoyable for both the person reading it and for the child to listen to. If you are trying to write a story that is rhyming and you are struggling and you're finding that you are just adding in random words that don't make sense, but you're adding them in just because they rhyme, Maybe try to switch and write a story that is not rhyming. You really want to make the story make sense. That's the most important thing. And not every story is suited to rhyme. So if you want to write a rhyming story, perhaps what you're writing about is the problem, not the fact that you can't make it rhyme. I think that some stories just do better as rhyming stories and some do better as non-rhyming stories. I also find the older the child gets, the books don't rhyme as much. I feel like rhyming stories are sort of suited to that under the age of four, five, maybe five-year-old. I feel like when you start to get to these older ages like five or six, the stories stop rhyming because they do become a lot bigger and a lot more involved. There's a lot more writing in those stories. There's a lot more words in the stories as the child gets older, which obviously makes it probably nearly impossible to write a rhyming story with a thousand word, with a thousand word story. So just keep that in mind. If you're targeting the younger children, the toddler age, rhyming is a great idea if you can make it work. As the child gets older, a rhyming story gets a little bit li less likely to happen. And by the theme of the book, I'm talking about whether you're going to be writing a story that's funny or serious or sad or some other type of emotion or theme. My biggest tip here is try to write a funny story. Even if your story the the background story is something serious like teaching some sort of morals or education in your story still try to add humor why because kids love to laugh and they love funny things and when they're having fun and laughing at something 
they learn a lot better than if they're in a very serious, somber, not enjoying it kind of mood. I read about a study that was done where they actually asked children what they liked most about the books they read or the books that were read to them. And the majority of those kids said they liked the books that made them laugh the most. So don't feel like you have to write a story that's all about morals or teaching the child something very, very important or how to be a good person and all that sort of stuff. Books like that are needed and there are lots of books out there already with topics across all that kind of stuff about how to be a good human. But books that are about nothing, but they're just really funny to read, usually do the best. Kids just want to be entertained. And if you can incorporate that funny, entertaining story with something educational, then you'll be onto a winner. Let me show you an example here. This book is called The Alpaca Ate My Cracker. And it's just basically a story about an alpaca that steals all his friends, the other animals, snacks. I mean, this book is not about nothing. The underlying storyline of this book is about sharing. But kids don't realize that. They just think it's about an alpaca that's stealing someone's snacks. And the educational part of it, which is about learning to share and to not steal other people's crackers or snacks, still comes through. The child doesn't realize it because they're just focused on how funny it is that this alpaca is just stealing all his friend's snacks. And it's funny. In another video that I've done about children's books, I also talk about a book called The Wonky Donkey. It is a, a bestseller, I would imagine. It's popular all around the world. And that story is basically about a donkey that has three legs and he likes coffee and he's really tall and it's just this really cool rhyming story. But at the end of the day, it's not really about anything, but I tell you what, kids love that story. The next tip is pick the right length. You need to make sure that the length of the book that you are writing is appropriate to the age that you are writing for. Kids have an extremely short attention span, like ridiculously short. I would say for a three-year-old, you'd probably get away with a three-minute story in length. A four or five-year-old, you could probably keep them interested for five to seven minutes. And then obviously as they get older, this attention span grows. So you don't have a lot of time to write a story that keeps the child interested for that entire story. But making your story the right length means that they can get through that whole story start to finish before they get bored. Again, there are no rules, no hard and fast rules for the for this, but generally you would want to maybe look at and stick to the standards that most books do across each of the ages. I myself kind of went beyond the industry standards, but I didn't really know anything about them before I wrote my book. My book ended up being around 750 words, which I think is probably on the higher end for the age that I was targeting. And I wanted to keep my book below 40 pages. When I initially started writing the story, my aim was to have a book that was around about 35 to 38 pages, but my story was just too long and it ended up being 41. And I actually even struggled to get it to 41 pages, but I wanted to keep it at this page length or lower if I could have, because with Amazon KDP, once my book hit 42 pages being printed in color, the printing cost increased dramatically and I would have lost a big chunk of my royalty to printing. So in hindsight, I would have been better to keep my story a bit shorter because I do feel like I did kind of fill up some of the pages with text a bit more than I had wanted to. But I know for next time and hopefully each book that I write will be better than the last. So in general, for kids picture books up to the age of around five or six, you want to try to keep the word count to 500 or, or under. As they get a little bit older, say around six to seven, the word count increases to maybe something in the 2000 to 5000 range. That is such a big difference in word count. But at this age, they become what we call early readers, where they aren't just sitting having an adult read a book to them. They are actually learning to read themselves. So they are doing the reading with usually just an adult beside them to help. So a lot different to 
a toddler or a younger child who needs to be read to. The next tip is use repetition. Repetition for kids is huge or humans in general. It's how they learn anything. And using repetition in your story gets them involved. It gives them something to expect. And after a while, they'll come to know those repeating parts and expect them coming. And they love it because they know the story or they can read the story themselves or parts of it anyway. It just increases the enjoyment that the child gets from the story and kids love the stories they think they know. They think they are reading it but really they've just memorized a particular part of it. And when that happens they'll reach for that book time and time again to read because it'll become one of their favorites. So pick something out of your story, a line or a sentence or a, a phrase, a few words that you can repeat at several times throughout the story but make sure that it makes sense. So in my story there is a duck and she gets lost and she's forgotten how to quack and she comes across a farmyard full of animals and she goes to each of the animals to see if they can teach her or remind her how to quack. So each animal she goes up to and asks if they can help her find her quack and each animal makes their own animal noise and when it's not a quack she ends up saying, how will I get back if I can't find my quack? So I'll give you an example here. So in this particular part, the duck has come across a hen and a rooster. So it says, Lolly finds Roger the rooster and Harry at the hen. Can you help me find my quack? I'd be forever grateful times 10. Why, yes, I think I have a clue. Roger the rooster ruffles his feathers, sticks his nose in the air and crows an ear splitting cock a doodle doo. Then she says, thank you for trying, you have an impressive cock-a-doodle-doo, but how will I get back if I can't find my quack? And so that line gets repeated after every animal that she comes across and asks to help her find her quack. And my hope is that that becomes the memorable, repetitive part of the story that the child can expect and read along with when that part comes up. I'll show you another example going back to the Green Sheep. This is a massively, massively popular book, a bestseller, and it's very simply written. But basically the way this one works is it just says things like, here is the blue sheep, and here is the red sheep, here is the bath sheep, and here is the bed sheep, but where is the green sheep? And so then the next, par next little section is the same thing. It goes through a few different things, and then, but where is the green sheep? And it does that quite a few times and eventually the kids know that they've got to get to there's going to be a part coming that says but where is the green sheep and my daughter loves this book and she loves saying where is the green sheep until the end when they find the green sheep okay next tip is keep it simple and i mean simple according to the age that you are writing for and that's where all that research that you should be doing into your target age will come in. Don't overcomplicate your story by adding too many elements or too many characters or multiple themes or multiple things that you want the child to learn from reading the story. Just pick one so that the reader is not overwhelmed by the amount of things that you're kind of throwing at them through the story. One theme, a couple of characters, you don't need to have a massive range of characters and just sort of one underlying theme, I guess, that is what you want the child to ultimately learn from your story. Use simple dialogue because kids don't understand big words or words with a lot of syllables in them. The way that they speak is very simple, short sentences, usually words with maybe one syllable, two maybe at the most. So your writing and the way you write your story should also reflect that so they can understand your language. You also don't want the storyline to be too complicated or too long-winded. Otherwise, the child will just lose interest because they just don't understand what's going on and they can't follow the story. If you are going to be writing a story that has some sort of underlying educational element, some sort of moral education element to it, make sure that you are going to be writing about something that the child will understand for the age that you are writing for. For example, a two or three year old most likely won't understand a story that's trying to talk about or trying to teach about something like honesty or empathy because they just haven't developed that skill yet. And so because at that age, it's something that they're just not going to understand. But maybe something like learning about their manners, 
saying please and thank you or maybe something about learning how to share. Those are sorts of things that they are learning at that age and it's something they can understand and relate to. And one last little tip, make sure your story has a happy ending. Kids don't want to be upset or sad at the end of a story and parents definitely do not want their kids upset at the end of a story. So give your story a happy ending. I hope these tips have helped you with being able to start writing your own children's story or finish one that you have maybe already started but got stuck somewhere along the way. If you are interested in taking Nuria's children's book creator course where you will learn how to create, write and illustrate a children's picture book, like I say, I always have links to her course in the description box below. And if you did think that this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up to help my video get out there and hopefully help more people to write children's stories. And I'll see you in the next video.